It was on October 29th, 1984, that people first introduced everyone to a brave child. We knew him as the Bubble Boy. He was born with a rare disease of the immune system, but David, and we never did learn his whole name, survived 12 years in a completely germ-free environment. Though sealed off from the rest of the world, he touched everyone. little boy. He had uh, black hair, coal black hair, and big, impressive brown eyes. Oh, he was a happy child, very happy, uh, smart Alex. Hi, Mom. From the moment he was born, David was confined to a bubble. Despite that, his family tried to provide him with a normal childhood, even creating a one-student school for David in the bubble. We're going to practice making our capital L and the lowercase l today. O, P, A, E. Very good. David, you want to walk up and down the hall? Using the technology that allowed astronauts to survive the hostile environment of outer space, NASA made David a special suit that allowed him to untether himself from his bubble. And for the first time, he could explore the unfamiliar environment of his own home. Just him being able to see the rest of the house was, for most people, wouldn't be a big deal, but to him, you know, it was. David's only hope for a normal life was a bone marrow transplant. By the time he was 12, the operation was scientifically possible, but risky. David himself decided to take that risk. His sister, Catherine, the only acceptable donor, agreed. You know, my, my parents said, you don't have to do it. And I said, you know, I, that's not a choice for me. I'm going to do it. How you doing, David? All right. At first, things looked good. But soon it became clear that something was terribly wrong. David developed a cancer triggered by a virus contained in the bone marrow. There was no way to stop it. When little David got sick, I felt guilty. I felt that since I was the one who gave him the bone marrow, I was the one who killed him or who... <laughs> the last thing I remember, I walked over to the doctor and I said, can I, may I remove my glove and touch him? And he said, yes, and I did. And that was truly the only time I felt David's skin. He died shortly thereafter. Now, meet Jerry Short, a little boy born with the same disease as David. But because of what was learned from David's life and death, the bone marrow transplant Jerry received from his sister Noel freed him for a life outside the bubble. He will survive and he will be, you know, a very healthy baby. And when he's older, I will tell him more about David. And, and through David and Noel, <laughs> he has survived a disease that has taken so many lives. Little David gave his life for strangers. And for me, that just, that just says it all. He just was the bravest, strongest little boy that there was. A quick uh, sidebar to this story. David's mother, Carol Ann, wrote her son's story with People reporter Kent Demeret, and three years later, they were married. The Boy in the Bubble is one of the two or three best love stories ever to run in People.